up, what's up, what's up? Welcome to church. Well, we have something special prepared for you. And happy new month. Is it your birthday this May? I want to wish you a happy, happy birthday. Well, if it's also your first time here, welcome wherever you're joining us from, whether you're joining us via Facebook or YouTube or Switch TV or even the latest church in town, the Zoom Church. Welcome, 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 welcome. Well, we're about to have some good time in the presence of God. Please lean in and let's enjoy the presence of God together. Let's go. Come on, put your hands together. This song says that our God is greater. Come on.
a scripture this week Isaiah chapter 6 and it says in the year that King Uzzah died I saw the Lord and he was seated in high uh, high and lifted up and if you, you may not know this but back in the day whenever a king won a battle he would cut off the tail of the veil of the other king and attach it on his on his tail so if the, if, if the Bible talks about how the glory of God filled the temple let me tell you, that's how much, how long his veil was. Now, I don't know about you, but my God has won so many battles. He has won battles over cancer, battles over COVID-19, battles over, of, even over issues in the family. And this morning, I don't know what battles you're facing, but let me assure you that you are going to see a victory. Because the God that we serve has already won the battle for you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And I just ask that you lean in and grasp this victory from Jesus. Mm -hmm. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't breathe. See, the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Oh, my God will never. my God will never fail. So I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle
Believe today, rise up, and walk in the victory, for the battle is the Lord's. Amen, amen, amen. And we have praised and worshipped in Jesus' name, and everybody says, Hey Mavuno family, this is Pastor M and I'm so excited as we launch out into this season we're going to be taking our families through the Simama experience and we're just going to be learning together about how to bring healing and freedom to our families. And as we do that, I am so excited to invite you into a week of prayer and fasting uh, for our families, freedom prayers. We're going to be praying that God is going to bring freedom and break all the bondages and strongholds that have held our families back for generations. And we're trusting God that our families are going to leapfrog after this season and experience a victory and healing that they've never experienced before. So this coming week, May the 2nd to, to the 9th, every morning uh, from 6.30 to 7 a.m., we're going to have prayer time, our freedom prayers, uh, led by our different pastors. Uh, please use the Zoom link uh, on, the, on the screen to just join us every morning. Uh, and also you can go on the Mavuno Church website, www w.mavunochurch.org and you'll find uh, any directions for that. Uh, in addition to that, the whole week we're going to be fasting and what that means is you're going to either not forgo all meals, uh, maybe just do a liquid fast uh, or uh, replace one of the meals or two of the meals or you know pick, remove some of the meals that you normally have and instead replace that time with specific prayer for the family. The prayer guide for that as well you can find it on our website www.mavunochurch.org and I can't wait. I'm telling you this is going to be an exciting season. I really am trusting God and we're trusting God with you that there's going to be some powerful changes, some powerful leapfrogging, that the next generation of your family will be far greater than the ones that have come before. God bless you. Are you concerned about the state of your family? Do you have family members who struggle with addictions, patterns of failure, stagnation, sexual brokenness, strife and conflict, or difficulty in communication? Do you sometimes feel lost and uncertain about what to do in your family? But what if? What if your family could change? What if your family could break the invisible strongholds holding it back and go on to find real and meaningful freedom? Then welcome to Simama. Simama is a powerful 10-week experience that helps you break any spiritual strongholds that have held you or your family back from being all that God created them to be. Starting on the 2nd of May, 2021, Mavuna Church invites you to the Simama experience. This year, we're doing it different. We're calling on each and every member of our Mavuno community to consider taking their family members through this experience. Yes, you heard that right. Whether you have done Simama before or not, whether you have a big family or not, and whether you have significant experience leading a group or not, we are calling on you to lead and to allow God to use you to be the change that your family needs. So how will Simama work? It's as easy as A, B, C. A, assemble your family. Preferably ask God to show you how to engage your family members and invite them into this experience. B. Be ready for training. Every Wednesday night starting from the 21st of April 2021, join in for a brief training session that prepares you to walk your family through the experience. The sessions run between 7.30 and 8 p.m. East Africa time and can be accessed via bit.ly slash Night. C. Connect with your life group. 
After each training session, we encourage you to meet up with a life group where you can pray for each other and for your family members. Members can then set a convenient time to meet with their families and discuss what they're learning. Please note that you do not have to be an expert to lead your family. Each week, a simple discussion guide will be made available on our website to help you. In addition, our Sunday sermons through May and June will be aligned to Simama and will provide additional support. For any questions, comments, or queries, please contact us via our website, www.mavunochurch.org, or send us an email at simama at mavunochurch.org. Simama, bringing freedom to your family. Masha! Masha, dear? Yes? Wait, can you remove these dishes? How many times have I told you about leaving these dishes on the table? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. People are coming. In how long? I have no idea because your uncle say, tells me, oh, we are coming in 10 minutes, yet I do not know how many people are coming. He has such poor planning. This thing is so last minute and I'm so pissed. But, but that's not fair. Like, like Uncle Mike, he's like the coolest uncle ever. Mm. I'll tell you who I don't like. Mm. Uncle Steve, mm. he's been asking me the same three questions for like 10 years. Mm. What, what, what school are you in? What are you studying? When are you graduating? Like I've answered those questions like one million times. And you get tired of them, isn't it? Now, don't worry about your uncle. You should be worried about who you'll be seated next to. Who? Ashley. Ashley? Mm. Please no, not Ashley. She's so annoying. Her voice, the way she looks at me. And did I tell you how she's such a snitch? Like the other day, I told her I missed just one semester to go and hang out with my friends. Ate, 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 ate. you missed a whole semester. Let's just say, is it a whole year of school? Can we say that? Can you just wait? We're going to speak with your father, you. You just wait. What, what about Aunt Margaret? She, she's so annoying, right? <laughs> Aunt Margaret. Aunt Margaret, she's another person who I do not understand. First of all, she has no sense of style and it's about time someone told her. And then she goes around asking everyone that when will you get married? And herself, she's single. Ana tusumbua, ala? Mom, can't we just like lie to them? We tell them, we tell them that, that we are not even here. Like we've gone on vacation to Dubai, France or something. <laughs> that, is, that is not even possible. First of all, umaliza masomo. And that those semesters that you have missed, you'd better finish. Don't think I have forgotten. Let me continue here preparing for this crazy family of ours. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching us from. Welcome to the Mavuno Church service. Uh, my name is Pastor M, Senior Pastor uh, of Mavuno Church, and I'm just so excited that wherever you're watching from, whether you're watching this from home, whether you're watching this on uh, transit going somewhere, some of you might even be watching from hospital, wherever you are, we believe that the Lord tells us where two or three are gathered in His name, He is with us. And so we believe that God is with you. As we've gathered together, we know that wherever you are, the presence of God is there. And today we are starting a brand new series. I'm really looking forward to it because it's a series for our time. We're talking about things that are relevant to our time. So get your notebook out and, and let's just have this conversation. Those of you who are watching this as a family, I'm hoping you can take notes together because after this you can have a small conversation about it just to ask what did God say to you? Uh, and each of you will be able to have a chance to just share with one another. So I want to dive into God's word but before I do, let me just say that these are difficult times. These have been really difficult times for us uh, as a people. Uh, the COVID-19 crisis, the resulting lockdowns have caused more misery, more challenges than I think any time before since the Second World War. I mean, businesses have been shut down. Schools have been closed. Jobs have been lost. Families have struggled to put food on the table. I mean, have you opened up the newspaper recently and just seen all those lists of auctioneers and the stuff that they're selling just because people can no longer pay their, 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 their dues? And, and many have lost loved ones. Uh, some of you who are watching this, you've lost loved ones. Some of your families are in mourning. I even know some families that have lost more than one person uh, in this season because of illness. And what a crazy, crazy, crazy time that we live in. And this is not just in Kenya, but it's across the world. And every Wednesday evening, 
we have this, uh, what we call our family night, Mavuno family night. It's a time to encourage each other. We come together virtually on Zoom. If you haven't joined one of those, please make sure you join us this coming week. And one of the ones last, last month, I asked this question. I asked people in a small poll, how many people here have been affected, uh, have had their health or the health of somebody uh, close to them affected by COVID-19? Can you imagine 50% of the people on the call had had a, cross, a close br uh, brush with COVID-19? And then in addition to that, we asked the question, how many of you have had your business affected or your, your income affected or the income of your family affected? 60% of people on the call said the same thing. Man, this thing is not a small crisis and it continues to affect our lives. And you know, in this country, it's even worse. Uh, for those of you who are watching this from Kenya, it's even worse because the prevailing political climate is not one that brings uh, hope and cheer to us. I mean, we've been reading nothing about but, but leadership greed government corruption everywhere you look. And it just feels like our leaders are much more keen on re getting themselves re-elected and getting permanent positions to rule over their people, to rule over Kenya forever. They seem to be much more intent on that than on caring for our nation, on doing the right thing, on caring for citizens. And it just feels, it just fills you with rage, doesn't it? Many times you find yourself angry as you read this and then all the stuff that's going on in your personal life and it just brings you to a place where there's so much helplessness. No wonder the writer of the Psalms asked this question in Psalm 11. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? In other words, in times of such crazy crisis, how are God's people supposed to respond? How are we supposed to deal as God's people? Now, here's what most people do in times of crisis like this. In times of crisis, our biggest temptation is to get overwhelmed and to run for cover. We, we get locked into survival mode. I mean, that's a natural thing to do, isn't it? It's like we look after ourselves, making sure me and my, me and my close ones, at least, we're provided for. I don't care about anything else. In times of crisis, it's every man for himself, every woman for herself, and God for us all. But today, I want to bring you a different perspective from God's Word. And I believe that this is a perspective that goes contrary to what you may be seeing on your TV screens. It'll be contrary to what you're, you're, you're going to be seeing in your newspapers. It's going to be contrary to what you're seeing on your social media feeds. And it is this, it is God's perspective for this situation, that this crisis season may be the best God-given opportunity that you've ever had to take care of your family. Let me say that again. This crisis season may be the best God-given opportunity that we've ever had to take care of our families. Now, why do I say this? You see, on the one hand, the COVID-19 crisis has disrupted families in negative ways. And we all know them. I mean, the rates of divorce and separation have just skyrocketed. Teenage crisis, teenage pregnancies. I mean, that's, what, that's gone up through the roof. Uh, Gender-based violence. We're even reading stories in Kenya about spouses assassinating uh, the, the, the people that they entered into a marriage covenant with. And, and one of my friends even asked me the other day, I mean, what's happening? There's so many cases of spousal murder that are happening in our time. It just feels like COVID-19, uh, it highlighted the challenges that were already existing in marriages and in families and just brought them out to the open. It just accelerated what was already going wrong in our families. So on one hand, that's what's going on. But on the other hand, and this is what's really important, on the other hand, this season has created a spiritual openness among people that I've not seen in a long time. You know what it has done is in times of crisis, in times of unprecedented crisis, people are ready for unprecedented solutions. People are ready for help. People are willing to deal with issues that they never would have dealt with before. And I believe that this is true in our families as well. You see, in every crisis, there is an opportunity. And today, that's what I want to speak about. I want to answer this question that some of you might be asking. In a stressful situation, in a time when we are zoomed out uh, from meetings, in a time when we are just trying to make ends meet for many people, in a time when we are dealing with all this instability around us, why? Why would I want to help other people, <laughs> namely my family and other people like that? Why would I be caring what other people are going through when I have so many issues to deal with myself? Why can't we just focus on ourselves and help ourselves first before we think about other people out there? And you know, I want to talk about three reasons. I want to talk about three reasons why this is the case. Three reasons why we must prioritize our families in this season. Three reasons why it's so critical for our families to come first in this season. And I hope that by the time I'm done, you will be seeing 
the opportunity in the crisis. So three reasons. Are you ready? I hope you're writing them down. The three reasons why we must do this. And the first is the influence who I'm becoming. The influence who I'm becoming. You know, whether we are aware of it or not, our family background plays a large role in how we make decisions and how we respond to crisis. A great biblical example for me is the man Jacob. You know, it's interesting, this guy was called Jacob. You know what Jacob means? It means he deceives. I mean, talk about a name. It's like your parents, you're born and they call you Conman, <laughs> hustler. <laughs> Sorry, some of you might be hustlers. Uh, but it's like your parents just give you, they brand you with a name like that. It's like the deceiver. And that's what his name was. This guy was such a con man. I mean, he tricked his older brother. <laughs> he got him to cede his birthright for a bowl of soup. I mean, this guy could sell ice to an Eskimo. I mean, he got his father, he cheated his father to give him the right of the firstborn, the blessing of the firstborn, by putting on wool on his skin so he sounded, he felt hairy like his older brother. This guy went on. I mean, he just continued to become, he pulled his biggest heist when he worked for his uncle Laban. I mean, he worked for Uncle Laban, and what did he do with Laban? He, he worked for him for 10 years, and by the time he finished 10 years, he walked away with all the fat and healthy sheep and goats and left all the sick and unhealthy ones with his uncle. I mean, this guy was a criminal mastermind. I mean, that's what, that's what Jacob was. Be careful what you name your kids, guys, because this guy became exactly what he was named. But it's more than just a name, because when you look at his background, you begin to understand where it came from. Jacob's father was Abraham. Abraham was a guy who, because he was afraid for his life, he lied about his wife. And he pretended, because she was so beautiful, he thought people would kill him for his wife. He got her to lie that she was his sister and put her in very compromising situations as a result. And then you move on one, the next generation, uh, Jacob's daddy. Uh, his name was, was Isaac. And Isaac did exactly the same thing. He told his beautiful wife to pretend she's his sister. And here's a weird thing. It wasn't because his life was in danger. Unlike his father, he didn't do it because his life was in danger. Why did he do it? Because that's what he saw his father doing. You know, your kids don't do what you tell them. They do what they see you doing. And this thing was passed on. And now in the next generation, what happens? It's become concentrated. The guy is even called the deceiver. I mean, it's just generational, generational issues being passed on. But that's just daddy's side. Look at mommy's side. I mean, his mommy was called uh, Rebecca. Amazingly beautiful woman. Uh, but guess what? She was a con man like nothing else. She's the one who actually even gave him the idea of conning her own husband. Imagine conspiring with your son against his father, to cheat him. And why? So that you can cheat your older son of the birthright. I mean, that is so messed up. But then look at her back background. Who's her, un who's her brother? Uncle Laban. <laughs> Uncle Laban was like the master conman who, got, who met the real master conman, you know, because Jacob ended up getting the better of him. But before that, Laban is a guy who during the wedding, uh, when, when he discovered that Jacob wanted to marry one of his daughters, he got him to work for seven hard years for his daughter. And then the wedding night, what does he do? Shwa, shwa, smoke and mirrors. And the guy discovered he married the girl who he didn't want to marry because Uncle Laban just switched things on him. I mean, this, this, this is what you call family strongholds. And so no wonder in the third generation you have a deceiver. I mean, this guy doesn't even, he can't stop lying. That's who he is. Why? Because his family influences who he's becoming. When you know, many times I find that people struggle with issues that they just find they they, they find difficult to control certain characteristics in their family, certain things that they find in their family that they just find this is how we are in this family. There are some families where they're just angry outbursts. We always just get angry and we, our temper is hard to control. That's just who we are. Or you find my family is not close. We just don't get along. We enter a room and in a few minutes there's a fight. And that's just how it is. This is the normal thing in our family. Or the men in my family, they just never amount to much. You just find that in your family, people just, all the guys, I mean, they could get the best education, get the best jobs, but they just never amount to much. Have you seen families like that? Or you find families where the women, the girls always get children out of wedlock. And it's just accepted. It's, this is a thing. We've never had a wedding in our family because people just move in when they get babies. Uh, people in my family die before I get to 60. They get to 60 and you just find there's a, 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 a early death is just a thing in your family. Or in our family, we always get conditions like high blood pressure and heart, heart, heart diseases and, and ulcers and arthritis. And it's just the thing. It's like a family illness. It's become a part of who we are. You know, some of you, 
as you're watching this, you recognize what I'm saying because these things have become so normal in your family that it's just the way things are done. It's just like for Jacob, he lied because that's how it was done. It's just the way things are done. And you know, the interesting thing is whether you're aware of it or not, your family influences who you're becoming right now, who you are, how you're relating at work, how you're relating with your wife and your children. Your family influences who you're becoming. And so here's a question then. Why, why would you not do something about your family? My challenge to you today is fight for your family. So many, so many of us are busy fighting our families as opposed to fighting for your family. My challenge to you today, and this is the thing I want you to, to remember today, fight for your family. I really believe this season, this is a word of God for us. A second reason why I'm, I must prioritize family in this season is because God placed me there for a reason. You know what? The family that you're born in, God placed you in there for a reason. Whether they're the worst family in the world or not. I mean, there's a great story. Jacob's son was called Joseph. And Joseph was a guy who was sold into slavery by his brothers. I mean, this guys, this whole thing became just convoluted in the fourth generation. And it, it, it became so bad, uh, other strongholds or favoritism and, and just uh, uh, bias came into play. And the brothers sold their, their own brother. They sold him into slavery. And this guy for, for years, his best years, he worked as a slave. And then after that, he was put in prison. And then he, worked, he, he lived in prison. And you can imagine, I wonder what resentments went through his mind. I wonder how many times Joseph said, I wish I was born in another family. I mean, other families could never have done this to their family member. But then what happens? He becomes a prime minister of Egypt. And when he becomes prime minister, the next thing you hear is his brothers are showing up and they're coming from a place of drought and luck and they're seeing this guy as their helper and all of a sudden, tables are turned. Joseph has the opportunity to, to, to smash these guys. He has an opportunity to, to pay them back for everything they've ever done. And then what does he say? He says in Genesis chapter 45, verse 8, it was not you who sent me here, but God. Mm, come on, somebody. I mean, what he's saying is, you know what? This family of mine is messed up. It's not, it's not you who decided that I'm in this family. It is God's purpose. All that messed up stuff, God is able to work through it. And he says in Genesis 50 verse 20, a few chapters later, he said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for my good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Listen, that family you're in, it is God's intention for you to be there. Sometimes when I was growing up as a child, I remember looking at some other families and admiring them. And once in a while, I'd catch myself wishing I was part of another family. Maybe they just had toys that we couldn't afford. Or they went on holidays that we could just dream of. Or they just looked happy for some reason. You know, with time though, I began to realize that there's a reason why God put me in the family he put me in. There's a reason why God put me in that family. With all our brokenness, with all our issues, I'm in the perfect family. God put me there for a reason. And there's a reason why God has placed you in your family. Whether you come from a completely broken family, that is just, it's just hanging on. You don't even talk to people about your family. You don't even admit you're from that family. Or whether you come from a really happy family where people seem to really care for each other and love for each other, have love for each other. God did not make a mistake in placing you where he placed you. There's a reason God planted you where he planted you. And let me put it this way. Even for those families that are happy and where people love each other, somebody paid the cost for them to be who they are today. There's somebody who said it stops with me. There's somebody who said I'm going to invest so that my family doesn't look like it's past. It looks like something different going into the future. Somebody fought for their family. And why then would it not be you who in your generation will say it stops with me? My family will no longer be where I came from. My family is going to be different where we're going. Our future is going to be different from our past. I'm going to pay the cost so that my family will be different. Somebody needs to fight for their family. The third reason why I must prioritize family. Third reason. So I said the first reason was because they influence who I'm becoming. The second, God placed me there for a reason. But listen to this one. And this one is important for me. Their destiny is my priority. Their destiny is my priority. You know, I, 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 I love this story in the book of Luke and this, this, this interesting story Jesus tells 
about a guy called Lazarus. And he talks about the fact that this rich man uh, died and he knew this poor guy called Lazarus, uh, but he didn't do anything to help him. He lived his own life. He died and then went to a place of torment. And the interesting thing, in the place of torment, his first instinct was, look, I'm in trouble. Somebody help me. But when he realized there was no help for himself, the next thing he asked is this. He said, could someone be sent? And he said, maybe even Lazarus himself. Could someone be sent to my brothers? Because I have brothers who have no clue what they're doing with their lives and that they will end up in a place like this. You know, it's interesting because this story tells me something. That when, when, when trouble comes, when the crisis comes, when, 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 when ultimate reality checks in, the things that are most important to us is not how much money I made, it's not what achievements I made, it's not what career advancement. This guy, in heaven, whatever he was in the place of torment, wasn't saying, go and tell my brothers to work harder so they can make more money. He wasn't thinking about that. What was he thinking? He was thinking about their eternal destiny. How could they live in a place without God? This COVID-19 crisis, when it came, it really was a place of much reflection for us as a family. You know, uh, I remember my, my good wife, she had us watching apocalyptic movies. Uh, we watched Left Behind. We watched the Book of Eli. I mean, I think she was just getting us ready. I think in, in our family's mind, it was like, this could be the last days. So we better know how people operate in the last days. And I mean, we, we consumed all those. And it was very interesting just getting, thinking, are we ready? Do we have food? Do we have, well, what do you do in the last days? What do you do when the foundations are being shaken? But you know, whether it's the end of the world or not, the most important thing that you can do is pray for the eternal destiny of your family members. This is what the rich man in that story tells us, that the thing that will concern you the most when everything else is stripped away is do my family members know God? Are their destinies secure? Are we going to be together in eternity? Or are they living their own lives and heading towards destruction? What if there was something I could do about it? What if there was something I could do to help them arrive in the right place? Wouldn't it be worth giving up everything? Wouldn't it be worth prioritizing everything I have just to assure, to assure that their family, my family's destiny is assured? Wouldn't it be worth fighting for my family's freedom? You know, my wife and I, we teach families how to invest. This is one of the things that we do. And one of the lessons we teach them is that in times of crisis, fortunes are made. In times of crisis, fortunes are made. How is that? It's because when everybody else is panicking and liquidating their assets, the real investors walk in. And that's the time they're going to buy assets at cheap prices because everybody is rushing to sell. They're making all the bargains. So even in this time of COVID-19, let me tell you, globally, the wealth of the wealthy has just become greater. And it's not only because they're thugs. It's not because they're thugs. You know, many times we look at that and say it's just because of corruption. It's not, that's not the only reason why people get wealthy, my friend. It's not the only reason. Part of the reason is because they understand that times of crisis are times of opportunity. And so when everybody else is rushing to divest, they're coming in clinically thinking about all the opportunities in the stock exchange. Right now in Kenya, people are making money because other people are panicking and running around like chickens with their heads cut off. And you know, I believe it's the same with our families. The world is telling us to hold back, to be paralyzed in fear, to sit back and complain, to look for somebody to blame, to talk about the government, to talk about the, 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 the World Health Organization, to talk about everybody else and to sit back in fear. But true spiritual investors are those who will see the opportunity in the crisis and invest in their families. So listen to me. What if 2021 could be the best year your family ever had? What if the people of your family will say in the future, we thank God for the COVID-19 crisis because without it, we would never have broken the strongholds that were holding us back. What if 2021 will go down as a year you broke down the shackles that were holding you back and launched you into your God-given purpose simply because you dared to invest when everybody else was running. And that's why this May and this June, we're inviting all our congregation members to take their families through the Simama experience. You know, Simama is, a, is this 10-week experience that will help you deal and break all the st family strongholds that have tied your family back. 
I want to ask you, please invite your family members to walk through this experience. If you haven't yet, please touch out, reach out to them and say, hey, let's walk through this study together. It's going to be, I'm looking forward to going through my own, uh, with my own family uh, through this experience. And in addition to that, every Sunday, we're going to be talking about this. We're going to be praying for family. We're going to be focusing on family. So get them to watch with you. Do a watch party or get them to join your campus and watch with you. And let's just grow together. Let's, let's fight for our families. Uh, this coming week, we begin in earnest because tomorrow we start our seven day. We're calling it our family champion prayer. Uh, and we're going to be fasting every day for the next seven days. Uh, some of you are going to be fasting with me, doing a liquid fast. Others of you are going to be missing one meal a day or missing two meals, just having one meal. And we're replacing those meal times with prayer for our family. I'm looking forward to praying for my family like I never have before. I, I can tell you that. And I've got some issues. I've lined them up. And I'm really looking forward to praying for my family. Uh, every morning in addition, as we're starting off the prayer and fasting, uh, 6.30 to 7, we're going to be having our family champion prayers. And it's going to be a time when our pastors lead us in praying for family. So I want to just encourage you, use the link on your screen, uh, check in every morning. Let's begin our days with prayer. Let's, let's make this next seven days count for our families. On, on Wednesday, uh, this, this coming Wednesday, 7.30 p.m., we're going to have our family night. And during that time, we're going to be talking about basic spiritual warfare tips. Uh, we're going to be giving you tooling and equipping to wage war for your family, to fight for your family. And I'm praying that God will help us, every one of us, See the opportunity in this crisis. Let's trust God to break the strongholds that have held our families back for generations. Let's trust God to help every member of our family achieve the destiny in the Lord that they were created for. You know, there's this great song and it says, I'm going to see the victory of the Lord. It's a prophetic song. And I want to encourage and invite the worship team right now to sing it with us. We're going to declare right now that any weapon formed against our family will not prosper. Any word that is spoken against our family will not prevail against us. Why? Because we're going to see the victory of the Lord. I want everyone to just join in faith as we sing these words together before we conclude our service. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. Sing and sing. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. our declaration Lord we're speaking these words by faith over our families right now that Lord we will see your victory we will see your victory Lord Lord there is no weapon that is fashioned against our families that shall prosper I want to pray for somebody right now who's going through a difficult time in their family there's somebody who's going through a divorce right now there's somebody who's going through illness right now there's somebody who is in mourning somebody who's lost a job somebody who's wondering where their next meal would come from. And I want to just declare over you right now that you will see the victory of the Lord. I declare that there is no weapon that is fashioned against you that shall prosper. I declare that nothing will snatch away the love of God from you and from your family. I declare that you will stand and that you will be established by the Lord. I want to just pray over you right now because you may have been in panic before this, but I'm praying that the Lord would open your eyes I speak over you like Elisha spoke over his servant and he said, open his eyes, Lord, and he will see that those who are for us are much more, are many more than those who are against us. I pray that the Lord would open your eyes right now, that you will be able to understand that there are angels that are waging war for you, that God is just waiting for your collaboration, that he just wants you to say, yes, Lord, here I am. 
that He will come alongside you as your partner and your family will see the victory of the Lord. And so I declare over every family represented in this broadcast today, I declare that your families will prosper. I declare that in this season, you will see God's goodness. I declare that in this season, when everybody else is panicking, when everybody else is running like chickens with their heads cut off, you will not panic, you will not run away, you will stand and you will see the victory of the Lord. I speak over you right now that you will declare these words, that whatever the enemy intended for evil, God is working it out for your good. God is working it out for your good. God is working it out for your good. Whatever the enemy has used to hammer your family, God is turning that around and is working it out for your good. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. And we say amen to these words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. Say, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. The enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take, you take You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take, you take Bless you, Mabuno. We love you.